they're up on Mars and they have the rover up there, the um, Perseverance rover. And here's where I come in. And it's a tiny lung. I mean, it's tinier than your thumbnail. I wonder how long it would be before Roger threw his hat in the ring. Go nuts on my nuts. Okay, my friends, this, this is really getting serious now. They're up on Mars, and they have the rover up there, the um, Perseverance rover. And here's where I come in. Well, hello, it's me, Creaky. Now, to quote Roger, self-proclaimed expert of all things mud fossil, he says, Our very own space agency is on Mars now, looking for signs of life in space. I have some info that they need to see. Okay, Roger, let's see that information that somehow only you seem to know. Tidy! Oh, here it is, okay. New camera to record sample collections. So they're going to be collecting them. Now, the cache cam, single camera, looks down at the top of the sample cache. It takes pictures of the sampled materials and the sample tubes as they are being prepared for sealing and caching. This helps scientists watch over the samples as they are being obtained and keeps a record. I want to watch this because I'm going to show you right now. I understand what these rocks are. So do we. They're rocks from the surface of Mars. Pretty amazing, eh? These are little tiny pebbles. They're, I, don't, I don't know how big they are, but I'm looking at things and they, they, they're just grabbing scraps of things. Let me show you something. Right up here is in my microscope. And this is what they have. They have the same sort of microscope. Bloody hell, Roger. Fair play. So tell me, who bought it first? You or NASA? You don't happen to have an Amazon link, do you? This is a, a telescopic type mi microscope. I can. Well, it doesn't seem like that would be very helpful at all. Isn't what you're describing a telescope, though, Roger, not a microscope? Oh, my bad. A telescopic microscope is a thing after all, and they're only seventeen ninety nine on Amazon. <laughs> Come on, NASA, you get fifty two squadillion dollars a day, and you couldn't have stretched the telescopic microscope budget just a little bit. You see what you're looking at here? You see that red? You see that black? That's blood. You see these holes? That's because those are alveoli. This Hang on a minute. I thought the areola was the bumpy bit around. Doesn't matter. Carry on. This is a lung. Lungs change the blood from red to black. Well, it's red to... It's oxygenated to deoxygenated. Or, you know, back and forth. That's how you respirate. You mean like this black blood, which granted is much darker red than the oxygenated blood, but it certainly isn't black. And that is what's going on here. It's 100% certain. Oh yeah, 100%. And it's a tiny lung. I mean, it's tinier than your thumbnail. And I'm going to show you that right now. This is my microscope. And you see how I can come up and go down and go way up here with it and go way down with it and look inside these little crevices and things. They have the same thing. And I'm looking, I could, I could see what I'm seeing, and I want to be able to tell them, I want to see that rock, I want to see this rock, I'd love to see that rock. I'm sure you would, along with thousands of other people. Dare I ask why you were so keen though, Roger? In the White House right now, they have a lung on display from the moon. Now, we'll get to the moon lung a little bit later on in the video, but in order to manage your expectations, it's gonna be a rock. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, this is exactly what we need, which is this X-ray fluoroscope that, to identify the chemical elements in a target so small as a grain of table salt. And they also can see the image at the same time, like that tiny lung, and we can see those alveoli, and we can see that it is made out of ferrous oxides. One of them will be the magnetite, one will be the hematite. Two different types of, of oxygen levels, oxides. This is what I need. So not two different kinds of tights then. Now I'm happy to admit that I'm not a chemist or a biologist. In fact, I'm no type of ist at all. But I'd like to think that I can see the difference between a rock and a lung. And you're basically debunking yourself, Roger. You do realize that. There are some things like your beloved rocks that can be affected by oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere. Just because you read the word oxygen, it doesn't automatically mean that there's a lung involved. You actually explained the reason for the black colored rock yourself. Magnetite and hermatite are important minerals that can be used as sources for the extraction of iron. Now the main difference between magnetite and hermatite is that magnetite is ferromagnetic, whereas hermatite is paramagnetic. Look at the big brain on me then. 
Okay, my friends, there is the uh, President Biden asked for the moon rock at the, to be a display at the White House. Well, I have one here, basically the same rock. Yeah, except for the one in the White House is from the surface of the moon, whereas yours is from your garden. But apart from that, they're identical. I can display it right here. And it, this is a lung, and it is loaded with blood. <laughs> it's not, though, is it? It's a rock. Well, it's actually a hagstone, which is a type of rock that has naturally occur in holes, like your lung rock, strangely enough. And I will show the blood in the microscope. All right, I say that is a lung, and don't forget now, that's the lung that we were looking at here. Now let me point down here where that lung came from. Right there. <laughs> that's where that lung is, right inside this microscope. You really think that that's the microscope that NASA uses in their labs? Oh dear, Roger. All right, that's that little lung. I mean, trust me, I know what I'm talking about. That's a lung. And you get any oh, specialist that knows what they're talking about, they'll say it too. Right, now you need to remember that statement. Ask any specialist, they'll say it too. But to be fair, I had no idea that a rock lungologist was even a thing. But remember, Ask any specialist, and they'll say it too. And I have a bunch of other lungs here, and uh, I have some that were, D well, I have one that was DNA certified, and of course I have this one here that is a lung, and I can show that's quite obviously a lung. Anybody that's an anatomist will look at that and say, yeah, Roger, you're right, that's a lung. That's a lung. Let me show you some other lungs. All right, these are two lungs of, you know, everything I have here is was on my property. That lung there has blood literally coming out of here. This is the one right here. We took the blood out of here, to, to drilled into a hole in a, where the reddest part of the red blood was. And I can show this in a microscope. No, no, you're okay. That's a pretty big rock. Even I can see that with my awful eyesight. So not only are you the world's only mud fossil certified expert, but you were also now saying that by some miracle, by some huge twist of fate, you just happen to be living on a property with an abundance of rock lungs or mud fossils, which again are just rocks. It, it, this is what they call feldspar. Well, inside of this feldspar is lung. This is literally what they call pleura fascia. It's the tissue that coats the outside of the lung. Then inside the lung is here where you have the, all the alveoli, which are the little things that I showed you in this little tiny lung. All those little tiny holes that I showed you bleed out of them. And I mean they bled red blood, red wet blood. And you can show us that. You have footage of it happening or photographs. We're not fussy. No. So we just have to take you a word for it, Roger. Okay. And these are the same little tiny holes that we're talking in the other ones. And every one of those little holes, had a, wherever you see the little red spot, there was blood coming out of it. Same thing with this one. So they're not rust-coloured grains within the rock likely to contain minerals made up of iron and oxygen then. And like I said, lungs and oxygen are not exclusive. Oxygen is found in other places and not only lungs, Roger. You do know that, don't you? So it's I'm not just some jamoke off the street here guessing and, and, and playing games. And my stuff is DNA certified. What the hell is Jamoko? Wasn't that that film that Robin Williams was in, you know, with the board game and... Oh no, that was Jumanji, wasn't it? And we know you're not just some Jamoko or nut off the street, Roger. You're a nut off the internet. <laughs> it's time to look at this for what it really is. Well, we already do. They're rocks. It's only you that thinks they're lungs, Roger. I really don't see your point. And this is how it, it trans transfers from the black to the red, just like I showed you in that little tiny lung. Hang on for a second. I've just realized, I can't help but notice, that for a video you titled Mars Biology Quest, you don't seem to be mentioning Mars that much. I thought you were going to be claiming that there had been lungs found on the surface of Mars, which is why I decided to title this video Human Remains Found on Mars. I swear, it definitely wasn't because I thought that people would click on that title. But that being said, would you have clicked on this video if it was called Nutty Old Pensioner Looks at Rocks? Probably not. 
but I think we can at least see what I'm getting at. Roger thinks that rocks are lungs. We found rocks on Mars. Therefore, human remains found on Mars. This is what I want to see from NASA. I want to be able to look down. You may not be able to see the colors. Maybe they can, maybe they can't. I don't know. I would imagine they can. If I can see them, I would hope they can. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't hold your breath, Roger, because I seriously doubt the pareidolia comes into the research process that NASA uses for rocks or anything else, really. Now, Joe Biden, our new president, asked for that rock from NASA, and it is a moon rock, and I know what it is, it's a lung. I deserve to be part of this whole operation here. I don't have to be a part of a university or part of NASA to participate in truth, I don't think, in the United States. Come on, Roger, don't sell yourself short. You are part of a university. Okay, it's a made-up university, and it was you that made it up, but it still has university in the name. And I agree with you, you should be on board. Even the most serious of research projects benefits from a little bit of comic relief. And um, that's what I'm hoping that I'll be contacted. Now, his wife is uh, in the educational institution. I believe that this is very, very educational. And, um, you know, I pay taxes and they're out there doing stuff that I think they need a little help with. And I expect to be contacted, that's all. Okay, now if I've learned anything in my life, it's that people's expectations need to be managed. And where possible, don't have any expectations at all. That way you never get disappointed. Which is what you're gonna be, Roger. And remember earlier in the video when I quoted Roger as saying, ask any specialist, they'll say it too? Well, listen to what he's about to say. Which expert will agree, seeing as they've all said no when Roger has asked them? It's been many years, uh, and I've tried hundreds and hundreds of people, and uh, not a single response. So I'm just hoping now that we have Joe Biden in the White House, let's see what happens. Well, I hate to be a Debbie Downer, Roger, but probably nothing. Unless, of course, President Biden happens to be as nuts as you are. All right, all right, watch this next. But before you do, make sure you subscribe. By order of the creaky blind.